Yo, thank you for joining us. You are watching NXT Live from the Full Sail University. We are back in Orlando, Florida, and episode 6 of the Universe Mode is on the way. The final stop on the journey before TakeOver San Antonio, Texas, the first pay per view of the Universe Mode series. And the opponents for that main event, the Daniel Ritami and Samoa Joe teaming up tonight. And speaking of TakeOvers, a rematch from TakeOver Toronto. Mickey James returns to take on women's champion Asuka before she prepares to battle Gail Kim in San Antonio. And we are back live, we're gonna kick things off with tag team action TM61. The Australian outfit well established in pro wrestling lower in Japan, formerly known as TMDK, the mighty O'Neill. Well TM61 stand tall, Nick Miller and Shane Thorne Looking to step out of the shadow as a warm-up act for the Tag Team Champions Rubber Rival. Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder are about to be put to the test this Saturday. A takeover San Antonio. And they take on the Young Bucks debuting in the WWE. One of the most polarizing tag teams in the world. Shocking the WWE Universe to its core. Thanks that announcement by William Regal last week on the next team. Now uh, it's Nicky Nichols, the more powerful of the duo of TM61 with a dropkick slamming Dawson with a powerbomb as he's setting up shop in the second rope misses the splash, not exactly renowned for his aerial offense but that experience coming into play of Scott Dawson sends him into the corner does a number on the windpipe of Nick Miller talking about the mighty Don Neal it's been a mighty long reign from the revival from the tag team champions and falling contest against American Alpha, defending them. Successful defenses against Gargano Ciampa, but they will have never faced a team like the Young Bucks. As Shane Thorne jumps into the mixer now, two on one offense in the back elbow, distributed by both Australians. Shane Thorne going for the cover, lateral press and hooks a leg. Dawson kicks out. Standing drop kick to the back of the head. And Shane Thorne misses that one. Well scouted by Dawson. Calf kick. This can be deceiving. Dawson can be agile when he wants to be. And calls in for his partner. Drops him across the knee for the gut buster. And while they're unable to make a count whilst Dawson's in the ring at the same time. Cannonball attack from Shane Thorne. Formerly known as Shane Verizer in pro wrestling Noah. Swinging neck breaker countered, catches him and slams him with a scoop. And Miller goes up top for the second time in this contest. Wilder stands up, blown off his feet with a missile drop kick. And there's a spine buster, shades of Arn Anderson. When it's just like I was saying at the start of the match, TM61 want to be more than just warm up opponents. They come here to win. Blue from the bomb by Nick Miller. Tremendous strength as Dash Wilder isn't exactly a small guy. But Scott Dawson stuck in his head and where he doesn't belong. Has he brought his partner just enough time? The Shane Thorne. What's all that about? Clearly going for Dawson. Sends the referee into orbit. And Scott Dawson finally makes a save. And Miller again going for aerial offense for the third time in this match. And Dawson with a haymaker to the kidneys. Now, the southpaw, some left jabs. Kick to the gut by Shane. Pistol ropes drop kick to the side of the head. High quality action here on NXT. Episode six and a spy buster of his own from Scott Dawson. The irony of a team that draws strong comparisons between Iron Anderson and Tony Blanchard. Shane Thorne trying to fight back. Clubbing blows from Dash Wilder and Dawson rolls him up. In the small package too, Shane kicks out. And the shenanigans continue. That one didn't work. Shane Thorne scouted it. As Dash Wilder tried to blindside and Primus carry. Into the slam. Catches his neck on the ropes. Shane gets the win and it's an upset. TM61 shocked the tag team champions. Just four days away from the defense at TakeOver. Against Nick and Matt Jackson of the Young Bucks. What an upset. Too many shenanigans being called. Both men got complacent. Dash Wilder taking the fall. And Scott Dawson confronts him. He's clearly not happy. It's their descent. 
Amongst the revival, that's why the shoving is parting them away. Get out of my face, get away from me. This is not the kind of chemistry you want as you head into one of the biggest tag team title defenses of your career. We are back, Anthony Mafia, as you just saw, trying to get James Ellsworth shook. She raised a fist to him last week on NXT. Mafia squashed him like a bug. And speaking of last week, it was this man here, Zack Sabre Jr., who came to the aid of Jack Gallagher, who was about to face an onslaught by Austin Aries, the man who will challenge Sabre Jr. for the Cruiserweight Championship at TakeOver. But tonight is the ally, Roderick Strong, as he picks him up and displays the strength with a deadlift gut wrench suplex off the ground Roderick Strong, one of NXT's newest additions coming up short in that number one contendership fatal four way last week on NXT which was won by Hideo Itami the Reza punt to the spine by the Englishman Zack Sabre current cruiserweight champion taking part in the cruiserweight a classic last summer since return to win the cruiserweight championship and defend it here on NST, double on the hook suplex, shades of white UJ, Chris Jericho. And there's another backbreaker for good measure. As the former Ring of Honor World Champion goes to work, there's a cover hook for leg. The Sabre kicks out on the one count. Austin Aries will be his opponent at TakeOver San Antonio for the Cruiserweight Championship. Aries, very outspoken, very vocal about his displeasure of being left off the disc of 2K17. A late arrival via the Future Stars DLC wants to rid NXT of these British midgets. Somewhat contradictory given the size and stature of Austin Aries. And look at this for an orthodox offense, Zack Sabre Jr. with a cross arm breaker using the top rope for leverage. As he drops down to the outside, confronts Aries and Strong. Tandem offense, swinging back fist to the both of them. Now Zack Sabre Jr. getting a second wind over the running boot. There's a nice roll up. Fintry roll style pin. That's not enough. Roderick Strong powers out. Certainly the damage has been done by Strong. Sabre willing his way onto his feet. And there's a boot to the face of Aries. Cross sound breaker by the Englishman. One of his specialities is targeting those extremities. Roderick Strong smack bang in the middle of the ring. Nowhere to go. Broken a hole, there's Aries and Jack Gallagher come to blows on the outside. Referee gets between them, sends Aries to the back. This match will continue with just one manager. No, no managers out of inside. Jack Gallagher gets expelled as well. Aries turning on the Englishman, sending him into that steel step. It's pandemonium, as Gorilla Monsoon would say. Strong ambushing for the Cruiserweight Champion and Aries coming to pick up the scraps. The same steel chair he was about to attack Jack Gallagher with last week. Laying it in on the Englishman. The Cruiserweight Champion softening him up. Five days away from his tower defense. That's going to be crucial to the inquest. And Roderick Strong being given free reign over the lifeless body of Zack Sabre Jr. Wins and losses don't mean shit tonight. <laughs> But coming up next, there'll be opponents at TakeOver San Antonio, but tonight, their tag team partners, Strange Bread Follows, it's Blake and Murphy versus Hideo Itami and Samoa Joe. We are back and you are watching NXT Episode 6 of the WWE Universe Mode on Don't Like Me, By Me. And it's the world's most annoying theme song. In fact, it's on par with Brie Bellas. It's Blake and Murphy back in action on NXT. It's the former NXT Tag Team Champions minus the support of their former valet Alexa Bliss who has moved up to SmackDown but here comes the Deyo Itami. Number one contender for Samoa Joe's NXT World Championship. Four to three other men in Shinsuke Nakamura, Roderick Strong and Bobby Roode. And if you haven't checked out last week's episode of NXT, it went off the air with Deyo Itami slapping Samoa Joe across his face. Samoa Joe coming down, offering his commiserations to the Japanese superstar and Itami didn't buy it. A slap to the face. 
There you see the match graphic confirms it. What a contest this will be. Hard hitting to say the least. Two of NXT's stiffest. And here they retire with a suplex across the top rope. Going for the tag for Samojo. And unsurprisingly, he drops off the apron and walks away. Well, they were never going to coexist, really. Let's face it. And Wesley Blake looking to apply the pressure to the former Kenta. Belly to belly suplex. And the rib breaker for good measures. Two on one contest now on NXT as Hideo Itami finds himself fighting from underneath. Don't underestimate a guy because of his size. It's the size of the fight and the dog trying to punt the head of Wesley Blake's shoulders. But he was smart to it. Drops him with the inverted neck breaker. And tags in Buddy Murphy for the fun of it. Walking around with him on his shoulders, going for the running power slam, and there it is. The day with Tommy being weakened as the seconds pass. It's unsurprising, but it's the perfect strategy for Samoa Joe to leave Kenta to fight his own battle and fatigue himself before that big showdown in San Antonio. But Kenta coming back with the beat rush. The day with Tommy clubbing clicks to the chest, spinning back kick to the midsection. He's signaling for the end here for Buddy Murphy. The Murphy counters and there's a spinning elbow. Shades of Misawa. A former mentor of Itami. Goes for the cover. There's lateral press. Referee gets in position to scar them shoulders, but Itami gets a shoulder up after one. Counter sends him into the corners. A flying knee from short range. Is this it? Kento signaling for the end. Sending him up and down onto the knee with a go to sleep. Bumping Wesley Blake off the ring apron. Hooks the leg in the cover. Two, three, and a day with Tommy. Overcomes two men. How about that, Samoa Joe? And there is the NXT champion, Samoa Joe, from behind. Shows up on his own terms. And when plan A fails, plan B comes into the fray. And the B stands for beat down. He left him for Blake and Murphy to soften him up. But you want something done right, do it yourself. Samoa Joe Lane no boots in to the challenger. And for the second time this evening, we're seeing a strategy of softening your opponent up before the pay-per-view come to fruition. We are back. And all I can say is William Regal will not let Samoa Joe get away with that boy. He is fucked after TakeOver. But speaking of TakeOver, let's have a look ahead to that card. Austin Aries taking on Cruiserweight Champion Zack Sabre Jr. Aries not a fan of British wrestlers, quite clearly. Gail Kim returns to the company for the first time in seven years as she takes on Asuka, your unbeaten women's champion here in NXT. And the big one, the Young Bucks finally arrive in the WWE as they take on the Revival, who have been dysfunctional this past week. And your main event, Hideo Itami, taking on some moratorium for the first time ever for the NXT Championship. But coming up next, what a main event is the rematch from TakeOver Toronto in November. Mickey James returns to take on Asuka. Welcome back to the final segment of episode 6 of NXT. Mickey James is about to take on the women's champion Asuka. Rematch from Toronto, non-title that is, but who knows if Mickey James defeats her here tonight we may well get a third part of the saga should Asuka retain on Sunday and here comes the Empress the NXT Women's Champion charismatic imposing undefeated William Regal stressed there was no one else on this roster ready to face her that's why Mickey James was called in for Toronto and that's why fellow Canadian Gail Kim was called up to face her and here she is Walking down to the ring nonchalantly. She's being very diplomatic though. Not coming out here to stir things up. But to play mind games it seems. Just to get that front row ticket. To scout her opponent for next Saturday. Both ladies squaring off face to face last week. 
Didn't escalate any further than that though. Could be a healthy breath of fresh air. The champion and challenger fighting on the basis of respect. Instead of jumping one another from behind. Mickey James misses the flying forearm. Ascat clutches the ropes. Quinzo with a missile drop kick. But what a start from the women's champion. Get a look at that Gail Kim. Hope you're watching. And Mickey James responds with a spinning round half. She is out. A flurry of strikes from the Virginian. And yes, I said Virginian. Not what else you're thinking. But Asuka tugging the left arm now. Could play a crucial part. She goes for the Asuka lock. Later on in this match. There's some strikes from Asuka sends. Mickey James into the corner. Hip attack to the skull. And the drop kick didn't quite hit the target. Grazed her more than anything. And there we go again. The women's champion going back after that left arm. Softening up. For the chicken wing. Otherwise known as the Asuka luck. And this could spell the end for Mickey James. Or the beginning of it at least. There's an orthodox pin from Asuka. As Gail Kim watches on. Mickey James kicks out. Kick to the gut, Mickey James up and down, drops her on the head with the DDT. Asuka splayed across the ropes. This could end early. This could be an upset. And the women's champion kicks out just barely. She barely knows where she is. Splash of the top for Mickey James. As the former WWE women's champion, former WWE Divas champion gets a second wind, but it's cut off with a dragon screw. Up and over, club to the back. Close line to the back of the head. She's scouting her. Going for that DDT a second time. Asuka counters, grabs that soft left hand and drops it with a Russian leg sweep. Asuka up in the top now. Spinning wheel kick off the top is the very move that finished Liv Morgan last week on NXT. And she hooked the leg for the cover. Mickey James escapes. Survives for now. We're into the business end of this contest. Close line on Bulldog. From Mickey James, a former protege of Gail Kim. Ten years earlier, we all know that for sure. And she catches on in midair. Drops her with a power bomb. Terrific strength from Asuka. It's not enough to put her away though. Mickey James is fighting this dog. Here we go. It's not the first time this evening we've seen a cross arm breaker. Asuka locks it in on Mickey James. Softening up the arm for a reason, but Mickey James able to shift her body weight and escapes scouts that right hand drops her with a sling blade and there's another roundhouse to the back of the head clocked her early on in the, in the match with that mule kick Asuka looking for her Asuka series but Mickey James gets one up on her with a short arm net break her hooks the leg oh nearly what a match here in Orlando, Florida at the Full Sail University. Scouts are going for that DDT one more time. It's still not going to cut it. Asuka escapes this time with a flatliner. And there's a kitchen sink to the ribs of Mickey James. Spinning wheel kick to the midsection. The Empress hits the ropes, drops her with that thump. The hip attack to the skull. How did Mickey James survive? Age is just a number, don't write off the heart and the resilience of Mickey James. And now Asuka going for the exhibition. The beat rush culminating with a spinning back hit to the face. Does that shoot background of Asuka pay off? Hooks the leg, Mickey James kicks out. And if that doesn't do it, what will? What must be going? Through the challenger's head, Gail Kim as she watches on. And Asuka nails her with another hip attack to the face. Whips her off and there is the Oscar Luck. Drags her down to the bottom of the mat. Nowhere to go in the middle of the ring. She succumbed to this in Toronto, Canada. Mickey James, the will to win. She escapes. Out of nowhere, there's a spinning wheel kick. For the second time tonight, Mickey James is laid out flat. Two, three, who's the leg? Hard fought victory for the women's champion. Valiant, valiant display from Mickey James, but 
Asuka is a champion for a reason and she's proved it there and this is one more stop along the road to prestige for Asuka as she faces Gail Kim returning to the company no foul play on display here nothing but a respectful handshake from the challenger thank you for watching and we'll see you in episode 7 San Antonio Texas for NXT TakeOver in a bit once again, thank you for watching and if you're just joining us on the journey, why not check out some of my other videos? Why not drop a comment, leave some feedback, what do you like to see, what do you like to see less of? What about following me on that Twitter? Yeah, why not like and subscribe? But most of all, I appreciate the support you've all shown me so far. It's pretty sick, I'll see you in a bit.